Hello friends from Paradise, otherwise known as Bali, Indonesia. It is a little bit windy, but I think this mic will hold up well. It has in the past, so we should be good. I wanted to hop on here today, not so much to talk about my travels. If you're interested in that, I recommend following on Instagram. I'm sharing some more thoughts and uh, photos of what I'm experiencing. I'm recording what I'm doing during the day, posting that on my Instagram story. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out there. But here in this video, I want to remind you, of course, that what you are shines just as brightly wherever you go. It does not matter what time of the day 12 p.m., 12 a.m. It doesn't matter if you're in Bali or if you're in the States or if you're in India or Antarctica. The truth of your being is just as bright. And I think we get so trapped in space and time. We we're so lost in, in the, the drama and the story of our life and how it's going and our, our location and where we're at and what we're doing that we miss the most obvious truth, which is that there is a invisible light that allows for all of space and time to exist. There is a being, a consciousness that allows for this entire ocean behind me, but also for the video you're watching. It allows for all of your senses, smell, feel, taste. Indonesia has some wild smells and tastes, good and bad. I've never smelled these smells in my life, but what's the being underneath these smells? It doesn't matter, I haven't smelled these smells in my life or tasted some of the foods here. Because there's a ground that allows all tastes, all smells, all feelings, all emotions, all thoughts, all of space and time to exist. And the more you can lock onto that, like a homing missile, you know, like a, like a, a heat-seeking missile, you just lock onto that, that, what you are, I am that, Nisagardata Maharaj. The more you lock onto that, the more you see, of course, it doesn't matter where I am, it doesn't matter what time of the day, it's pervaded by this being. And that frees you. Because all of your struggle and suffering comes from... I, I don't like the word identification because it's so overused, but it comes from a infatuation with time and space. Let's not use identification. I think that word is overused and it doesn't really connect with me. It's like you're so infatuated with time and space, you're so lost in the drama that you just don't, you don't see what's allowing it to happen, right? And so it seems so obvious when you recognize it because of course <laughs> that's what always was and it was what gave rise to all that is. But you start to get a contrast between being lost and being free. Being lost, being free. And there's a sort of isolation between, or uh, oscillation between infatuation with time and space and stories and the drama, and then a recognition. Oscillation between infatuation, recognition, infatuation, recognition. And then at some point, you just realize even if there is a story, even if you have a character, it doesn't change the truth. And from there, you can actually play your character with total freedom. 
a lot of people think that the the character the personality is the ego no 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 that's not the ego that's not the ego the ego isn't a thing ego is what comes from the infatuation or identification with the story in time and space ego is what comes from being so immersed in the drama that you don't realize what you are being so immersed in the drama that you're not free and from that comes greed from that comes manipulation from that comes exploitation from that comes what we call ego but the ego itself is not a thing it's not the personality the personality is fine the character is fine and that's one thing you realize when you wake up is that there was never a problem with the character in whatever unique karmic way your character developed and it frees you to be your character to the utmost and you see a lot of spiritual people would say oh that's ego ego you're you know you're playing a character that's ego no 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 what's ego is feeling so superior that you don't even acknowledge your your humanness you don't acknowledge the personality and that that uniqueness you have what's ego is pretending that you are the atman and you are above it all and you do not feel any emotion you are perfectly blissed out all the time i'm sure that's possible but i'm also sure it's possible that uh if you're believing that you might be fooling yourself because true joy a true freedom is not a specific feeling joy isn't a feeling joy is what you are love isn't a feeling love is what you are and that's why when you start to wake up all these emotions might come up you might have some fear come up you might have some anger come up you know some intensity i'm sure some of you noticed that in my previous previous video some some anger and intensity but what's the problem if you're not lost in the play there's no problem with these emotions they you know and a lot of them will come up because they've been so suppressed from your infatuation and your identification with contorting and holding yourself to a specific way of being in the world and not actually being free so you wake up all this nasty stuff comes up it's like cleaning a wound you know when you clean a wound initially all this shit comes out of it but that's good you see so it's not about a specific emotion it's about recognizing that all of these emotions are happening within a deeper presence and that's joy joy is the ability to feel any feeling you're having totally without resistance it doesn't matter if it's anger or if it's fear or anxiety when i first got here to bali my ego was throwing a fit it was a new country new continent i'm completely alone and so my ego was was going bat shit crazy fear anger existential terror but there was no problem <laughs> because i knew and i was watching from a deeper place i wasn't lost in those emotions the emotions were coming up they were dancing in what i am and then they went on so it's not about feeling a specific emotion it's not about having this you know eckhart toll i'm always calm and zen vibe no i mean if that's how you actually are then awesome but like for me you know i'm i'm 24 i'm a guy i have testosterone flowing through my veins i i'm high energy i'm intense and so it would be dishonest of me to act all eckhart toll zen when that's not what's true now sometimes i can be that way but a lot of the times i'm i'm a little wild but see when you realize what you are all of that is okay the only reason you have a problem with that even if you're interested in spiritual stuff is cuz you're still playing games you're still playing image games especially if you make videos you're still playing this nice zen i i don't feel anger i am perfectly perfect all the time you're still it's it's another layer of the ego's game it's another 
layer of identification, of infatuation with holding to some image and form. Uh, but like a cloud, like a wave, you can't hold on to it forever. So at po one point you just let go. And when you let go, it just flows. And yeah, there's emotions and, you know, like cleaning a wound. Some nasty stuff might come up. You might get really mean for a little. But you're looking from a deeper place and so it's all okay. Right? It's all okay. And, and that's freedom. And, and it's, such a, it's such a relief. It's such a relief. It's such a relief to see, not, not to just understand intellectually, but to truly understand with your heart and with direct experience to see the truth that freedom is not contingent on an emotion. It's not contingent on how energized or tired you are. It's not contingent on what you're thinking. It's not contingent on where you're located. It's not contingent on anything at all. It is completely free from any form, from any form, from anything. And that seems to be one of the final traps on this path is these subtle ways the ego is trying to play enlightened. But true enlightenment, <laughs> true enlightenment is free. <laughs> You can't pin it down and say, okay, true enlightenment is I am Zen and tranquil in a Samadhi state 24-7. If you're in a Samadhi state 24-7, you're Zen and tra tranquil, awesome. You know, that can be helpful, like, especially when you're flying across the country like I did. You know, so developing meditative skills, so when you're sitting on an airplane for 12 hours and in an airport for seven hours and then on another flight for seven hours, that can be incredibly useful because then you don't have to distract yourself and squirm in these, in these seats while you're sitting for a long time. You can sit and be completely tranquil and blissed out. So yeah, meditative states are, are very useful, but that's not freedom. And, and I think that we mistake that a lot. I did, for sure. I, I totally did. I thought, okay, until I act like Eckhart Tolle, I'm not enlightened. <laughs> Until I act perfectly zen and calm, I'm not enlightened. But you'll be waiting your whole life for that because that's not enlightenment. You see, for Eckhart Tolle, that's probably just his natural disposition. He's, he's an older, quiet man. But that might not be you. So don't try to fit an image don't try to fit a thing it's not that's not what it's about that that's a your mind is again your mind it's another infatuation so truth is not an infatuation it's not an identification truth is what is literally and um and 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 it's like polishing a mirror, like Ram Das says. You just get clearer and 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 clearer about what you are. And you get so clear that at some point you just say, Oh yeah, I can feel emotions. I can feel anger and fear and anxiety. I can, I can play this game. I can play my character. I can lean into my personality. I can accept my ego and not shame it. Because you see, it's just, it's all a dance. But until you, until you mature in that way, until you mature spiritually, you'll be playing these games of, you know, fitting in, fitting in. It's what all my previous videos were about, fitting in, playing an image, uh, um, looking and playing the spiritual part, following a specific, you know, rule set which are all great, ha they have their uses and practicalities when necessary, but at some point you gotta let all of it go and stand on your own, totally, as the incarnation of God you are. And, and that's, that's true power. True power is not needing approval from any person, from any religion, from any doctrine, from any YouTuber, from any podcaster, from any spiritual teacher, from anything, that is true freedom. 
Now, does that mean I don't read or listen to other podcasters or YouTube videos or Eckhart Tolle or spiritual teachers or books or spiritual doctrines or spiritual teachings? No, no. I, I listen to it all. I read it all because, one, I enjoy it. So when I'm reading a book, you know, when I first started reading spiritual books, I was reading because I was like looking for something. Ah, give it to me. You know, I wanted the book to give it to me or I wanted the video to give it to me. I wanted the spiritual teacher to give it to me. But now, <laughs> now when I read a book or I listen to a spiritual teacher like Adashanti or Muji, now it's coming from my recognition. It's coming from my love. And I'm, al I'm almost just enjoying all the ways everyone is, is sharing and expressing their own view of this deeper truth and this deeper being. So it's coming from a different place. And it's also a beautiful reminder because it's not like sometimes I don't get infatuated some, like, and lost sometimes, I do. I'm not perfect. So I, I still get pulled in and so there's a use there with a spiritual teacher with a video like this or someone like me that is, is pointing you back to yourself. There's a, there's a legitimate practical use with religious traditions. And that is to remind you of what you are. But really past that, you can get, you know, if you're not clear, you can get sucked in and you can get infatuated and you can get lost in the, in the, in the glamour and you can get lost in, in the tradition or whatever it is, or you can get lost in one person's specific view that you lose sight of what the whole point of spiritual teachings and teachers and books and all of this talking basically is for when it comes to awakening and, and enlightenment, which is mainly to remind you of your truth, but also just to share and express the, the, the love and the freedom that comes from recognizing that truth. So yes, of course, there's always practical uses to things, but it's the, the question is to what extent and when does it go too far and what is the main trap? And of course, the main trap with any video, any teaching, any teacher, any religious tradition, the main trap is that you mistake that for the truth. <laughs> you mistake that for what you are, of course, of course. But like I said, the clearer you get about what you are, it's almost like you need to take a pause from it all and get clear. And once you're clear, you can come back in. And instead of trying to get something out of it and take, you're almost just like, you're just there with it. You're there with the, the, the spiritual teacher talking. You're there with the, the book you're reading, you're there with the, the teaching or, or whatever it is. You know, you visit a temple. I'm going to go visit some temples here in Bali. Some uh, very, very old ancient temples. And it's like, I'm not going to go to this temple thinking, ah, you know, where is God? God, give me a sign. It's like, no, I'm going because God. <laughs> I'm going because love. I'm going because truth and freedom. And so it's like flipped. And, uh, and, and that's such a joy. And really, you know, only, only you know. Only you know how you're using this type of information. You're either using it like a drug. Ugh, give me, give me, give me, give me. I need more spiritual enlightenment. Give it to me. Or it's, 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 uh, it's something you enjoy. <laughs> And uh, my suggestion is, is the latter, of course. But you might have to get lost. I mean, we all do. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what time of the day. It does not matter. Because the invisible consciousness, see, that's the thing about consciousness. It's invisible. It's infinite. It doesn't have a form. So you can't see it, you know, like, where is it? Victor, where is it? 
I can't see it, Victor. Where is it? You're, you're not going to see it. You can't, you can't sense it because your senses are coming from it. So it's tricky. It's very tricky. And you'll make mistakes and you'll think it's this and then you'll realize you were deceiving yourself and then you'll blah, 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 and the play, the drama goes on, but it's all okay. It's all okay. It's all okay. <laughs> and that, that, that's the beauty of it. Even all of your, your false beliefs and your deceptions and your spiritual games you play trying to be like Eckhart Tolle when really inside you just want to kill somebody. All of that is okay. None of it's wrong. At all. And, and that's joy. Again, joy is not an emotion. Enlightenment is not an emotion. It's the radical acceptance of all emotions. It's a radical acceptance of everything. Everything. The good and the bad. The light and the dark. The entire polarity is accepted by the infinite. And that's you. It's just a matter of time before you're clear about that. And you wouldn't be here watching this video if there wasn't a seed that was sprouting. At least, at the very least. So don't worry. <laughs> you know, sit back, relax. <laughs> Enjoy the view. <laughs> All in its divine timing. And, and sometimes it needs to play out. You, you, you learn through suffering. Through suffering you learn. So it's not, nothing's for nothing. <laughs> nothing is for nothing. No feeling, no thought, no experience, no moment of your life is for nothing. Like, oh, it was a waste. No, 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 no. It's all, it's all perfectly, perfectly, divinely ordered. Even if it seems chaotic even if you are anxious, even if you feel like, what the hell is going on, even if you feel confused, yes, that's a part of it too. And you have to remind yourself of that. Remind yourself, enlightenment isn't about even being very clear about enlightenment. That's the paradox. <laughs> you can be more free inside and totally confused and lost intellectually and, and, and in a cloud about enlightenment, you can be more free in that than you can, you know, having everything perfectly, ugh, but you're all caught up inside. You can be more free and angry than you can pretending you're Eckhart Tolle in all Zen. <laughs> How about that for a paradox? And you're like, what, Victor? That's not possible. How can I be more free when I'm angry than when I'm Zen like Eckhart Tolle. Well, that's the conundrum. Now maybe again, maybe you're Zen like Eckhart Tolle and that's just what is perfectly, you know, free for you in that moment, then hell yeah, be Zen. But what I sense is that most of us doing this work, consciousness work, we get caught in trying to be Zen. We're trying. You see, it's the trying that gets you caught. <laughs> but what, what are you trying to do? <laughs> You're trying to be what you are, that makes no sense. You are what you are. <laughs> so just be what you are. <laughs> and, and see what you are clearly. That's it. There's no trying. There's no... Uh, <laughs> or maybe there is. And again, if you're doing this... Uh, I gotta be Zen. If I'm not Zen, then what am I? I'm not an enlightened saint. Ooh, scary. Scary. Can you let go of that image of yourself too, being this Buddha? This, this you know, second coming of Jesus to remind humanity. Can you let go of that image of yourself? 
Ooh, that's a tricky one to let go of. <laughs> that's a very, 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 very sneaky, tricky one to let go of. You know, the, the savior, the saint image. But of course, it's another image. <laughs> and that's why I say you can be more free and angry than forcing yourself to be this, this saint that's perfect and never feels, it never has a dark thought. In, uh, in uh, the Hindu tradition, I think Ram Das spoke of dharmic anger, which is interesting. You would think, no, I can't be angry. Yes, you can be angry, especially if it's a, it's, if it's, if it's a free anger and it's just flowing and you're not, you know, worried about what other people will think of you. Now, again, we talked about this before. If you're immature about your emotions, if you can't handle your emotions, then yeah, there will be consequences because you will make other people very angry. <laughs> you, will, uh, you will get yourself into trouble. You will face consequences if you are childish about your expression and your, your, your emotional um, freedom. So it's not like there's not nuance. It's not like there's not a management and a wisdom in how you are expressing or feeling what you're feeling. So it's not totally, you know, crazy. Although, hey, sometimes you got to go a little crazy because you learn from that too. You see, that there's no rules. There's no rules at all. But in general... Spiritual maturity allows you to feel anything without those feelings damaging others or life around you. And, and that we could almost call mastery. And what's paradoxical, now here's another twist. Maybe we'll end on this. When you allow yourself to feel anger in, in a mature way, from that comes the most blissful, profound emotions you'll ever feel. <laughs> and you're like, what? Victor, you just said that I can't force myself to feel zen and peaceful and I need to allow myself to feel anger and fear and all these dark, you know, negative emotions and shit. And now you're saying if I feel those, that fr from that comes bliss and, and deep emotional peace. And it's like, yes, <laughs> yes, of course because you're not restricting yourself. So yeah, you'll have like these little spiritual burps, you know, you burp out anger, you like burp out all this like nastiness, but you get it out of your system and then what's left is like this harmonized emotional mind and body. And then that's where you tap into the emotional peace and tranquility. But you can't get there through bypassing all of your shit. You have to actually go through the shit and feel the shit and, and, and and, and see it and acknowledge it and not hide it because you want to just get to the goodies. You know, you want the spiritual goodies without the spiritual work. And the spiritual work is feeling terror, existential terror. The spiritual work is feeling deep, deep, deep sadness. The spiritual work is going through the dark night of the soul. And for those of you that don't know, the Dark Knight of the Soul comes from St. John of the Cross. He was a Spanish monk and mystic in the 14th century, I believe, and he outlined this whole process. You see, none of this is new. And you will go through this process of deep, dark turmoil, but why are you going through the process? Because you're polishing the mirror. And from that deeper place, all is okay. And we're going to wrap it up here because I could keep talking for days. I could sit here for hours and keep talking. But all we really need to know is that it's all okay. Every emotion, every thought, everything is okay. Because it has its place in the deeper being. It comes from the deeper being that you are. So contemplate that. 
contemplate that, sit on that, chew on that, see what happens. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, hit that like button for me. And if you're interested, I now offer consciousness coaching. These are one-on-one -on -one specific coaching calls where you can work with me whether you're interested in consciousness itself and, and discussing stuff more like this or you have a more specific problem, work, family, relationship, that is there. If you're interested, link is down below. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see what I'm doing here in Bali. But other than that, enjoy your day and remember, remember, all is okay. Because what you are is nothing. And what you are pervades everything. And that paradoxical statement is freedom. Peace.